Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Atlanta Thrashers franchise mode here in NHL 21. So in last episode we had the draft in the re-sign stage and now we're in free agency looking to maybe add a few pieces. We might not add a few pieces because this roster is already pretty much set for next year but we could still bring in some maybe some other players if we need to for like the AHL because we technically got our goaltending set. We already got our defense set as well because we got a lot of guys that are also thrown down to the AHL portion of this. And then we also got a decent amount of wingers. Like, we look like we're going to be probably a good team again this coming season. Just hopefully we don't have to run into Tampa Bay because Tampa Bay is a really good team and they'll knock us out probably. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much that. We do have one comment to go over before we get into some free agent signings potentially. And that is from Hawksfan88. He says, don't think you really need anything in free agency. Just try and see if there's any good prospects or good young prospects. So we'll take a look for some good young prospects. But uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to sign too many of them because we currently have 37 out of 50 contracts. But if we go to our RFAs, we'd be at 39, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, and 47, 48. And goalie-wise, 49.50. So technically, we'd be at 50 out of 50 contracts. So we might not be able to sign anybody. Uh, just because these guys are all technically qualified at the moment. But we'll still take a look anyways. But I probably won't be able to sign any of them. Just because of the amount of guys we have qualified for the AHL. So if we go to... Let's go UFAs. And if we sort by potential on centers to start off with. Um, there's Lenevu, but, eh, yeah, this guy's stats are not the greatest. It's all around, he's not that bad of a player, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. 59 to 20 is not terrible, but it's not great either. 22 years old and 64 is not great. 24 and 73 is not good either. See, so, yeah, I don't think we're going to sign in those guys. Most of these guys are 24, 25, which is not good enough. Low top six, that's 50 overall at 19. Hmm, yeah, not that good enough, I don't think, for these type of centers. How about left wingers? Um, there's Columbe, but he's t already 24. There's Cooper, who's already 24. Yeah, most of these guys are already a little bit older. Uh, there's a couple 20-year-old low top sixes. 74 overall, that's not terrible, but... Uh, Eh, yeah, it's kind of weird overalls again. Like, I hate how weird the individual attributes are this year. Uh, Selick, drafted by Columbus. Not that bad, but a 69 offensive awareness and a 91 defensive awareness is really weird. Yeah, so nobody for really for left wingers, right wing wise, there's not really anybody. Yeah, not really anybody. And then defensively, there's a 21 year old top four. Who is a 78 overall? Huh. If we really needed more defensemen, I'd go after this guy, but we have so much defensemen, it's ridiculous. This guy wants 2.2 as well, which I'm not wanting to give him, probably. Um, and then goalie wise, there's that high starter that's 22 and 70 overall for 7th round pick at Yotes. But I don't think I'm going to do that. Yeah, there's not really anything out there, unfortunately, but uh, that's that. And yeah, since we're not going to be making any signings, we're going to be taking a look at all the AI signings just because I'm kind of curious on where players go in this franchise mode. So let's go to the 31st and see what happens for AI signings. Hopefully there's some really interesting ones because I always like it, like I mentioned in previous episodes, like uh, former players going to teams they actually played for. It's kind of neat when that happens. So some of our RFAs are accepting, which is good. We'll have to make sure those are all done for the start of the season. And we should be getting close to the end of all that, I think. That might have been all of them. Oh, there's another one. Okay, let's take a look at what signings happened in the first month of free agency. And then I'll probably make a jump cut to the start of the next season with our edited lines. Because I'm kind of curious on what our lines are going to look like for next year. So... Let's go to those free agent signings. There's probably going to be a lot more uh, players that I didn't create getting signed because we're kind of running lower on those. Um, and then there's also probably like a bunch of random uh, yeah, AI players getting signed. So uh, Jeff Gilson got traded to Boston, which is intriguing because I believe he was with Boston after he was in San Jose. So that's kind of neat. 
Uh, Davis Nanabi gets traded to uh, Vancouver from Colorado, so that's also cool. Um, Signing-wise, anything interesting? I see Dan Snyder signed with Europe. Our former player, Hal Gill, signs in Phoenix. Interesting. Wyatt Belak signs in Nashville. That's not a real player, but that's still kind of funny that a Belak signs in Nashville because Wade Belak played there, obviously. Steve Sullivan in LA. That's a pretty good signing for them, but he's probably dropping. Yeah, Chmenev signs in Florida. A lot of random AI signings, like I was mentioning. Um, anything else? Jamie Langenbrenner in Philadelphia near the end of his career, probably. Montador in Carolina. Darren Quinton, Calgary. Looking for some big names. Mike Comrie in Florida. Eric DeZay in the Rangers. Interesting. I could see Eric DeZay in a Rangers uniform. Uh, Sean Bates in Buffalo. Morrow in Washington. Somic in Nashville. Todd Bertuzzi signs with the Los Angeles Kings. Interesting. Uncle Todd goes to Hollywood. I like that. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say Uncle Todd, because, you know, Ziri says that all the time. If you guys watch Ziri's cards and stuff like that. Um, Rick Nash signs with the Islanders. Wow. Columbus lost out on Rick Nash already. I didn't even realize that. But he signs with the Islanders of all teams. Interesting. Ryan Miller goes back to Buffalo on a four-year contract. Todd Mershank goes to Calgary. He used to play for Edmonton. Lundmark signs in Arizona. Did he ever play for Phoenix? I don't know. I'm thinking he did, but I could be completely wrong with that, but I feel like he did. Michael Groshek signs with Boston, where he actually played at one point. Ziggy Palfy signs in St. Louis. That's kind of intriguing. I wonder if, uh, yeah, he's going to be able to play with, like, Pavel Dimitra. If Dimitra's still there. Anything else interesting? Jay Pandolfo goes to Boston, where he played near the end of his career in real life, I'm pretty sure. And I believe he's a Massachusetts-born player. Ryan Park signs in Florida where he actually played. Man, that's so cool when I see that. It gives me goosebumps, you know, when you see that happen. Especially when you create these rosters, too. You know, it just gives it an extra boost. PJ Axelson in Ottawa. Anything else intriguing for signings? Damon Lankow in St. Louis. That's a big signing for them. Lankow is probably, like, pretty old, though, at this point. Like, 33 or something, maybe. Uh, Kari Lettinen signs in Florida. Ozzy Vanen signs in Florida. So a couple fins going there. Anything else? If you guys see anything also that I missed, let me know. Uh, Saku Koivu goes back to Europe on a one-year deal. I think he was on another team for a little bit, but I could be wrong in this. UC Jokinen signs in Ottawa. Yarmer Yager goes to the Blues. That's actually kind of cool. I don't know if, uh, if ever Yarmer Yager went to the Blues, if they would have won a cup earlier. Uh, Yashin signs in Carolina of all teams. Dead Marsh in Europe. Anything else intriguing? Eric Lindros signs in Washington. Peter Sikora in Carolina. And I think that's pretty much it. Actually, Milan Hayduke in Vancouver. It's a little weird. Going from Colorado to Vancouver. Doug Wade in San Jose. Marco Sturm in the Islanders. Prospel in Colorado. Rolston in Pittsburgh, Friesen in Toronto, Chimera in Florida. And uh, Tom Pody also goes to Washington where he played at one point. So a lot of players actually going to teams they've actually played for. So I'm very actually happy about that. That's really cool to see. I'm going to make a quick jump cut to our edited lines for the upcoming season. And then we'll probably simulate to like maybe January the 1st and see how our team does. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, guys, so our lineup looks pretty good again, but once again, we do have to scratch Blue Just, I think it was. Yeah, we have to scratch Blue Just because uh, just the chemistry doesn't work with him that much, so we'll probably have to trade him away at some point or let him walk to free agency this year because we do have an abundance of defensemen in the AHL, which I'll get to in a bit. But here's what our lines look like for this season. So we got Malkin, Bergeron, Kovalchuk, so a very good top line still. We got Camilleri, Kuznetsov, and Kemp. So that's a pretty solid second line. Um, Camilleri's in the last year of his contract here. I don't know if he comes back after this. He may. But uh, we do have Bork, who I would probably rather use on that second line. Um, so yeah, third line, Bork, Houghton, and Henricius. Pretty solid. Fourth line, Ivanov, Frolov, and Likichev. So an all-Russian fourth line, I think. 
Russia, let me just make sure. Russia and Likachev is Russian. Okay, good. I didn't wasn't sure if like anyone was from like Ukraine or something like that because I don't want to say they're all Russians and then they're not. So, but yeah, our forward court looks really good. Very excited about that. Defensively, we're a little bit weaker, but once again, it's very nice and a very young defensive core. Kondratiev and Wall are the oldest guys at 26 years of age, and then we got Martinez and Ferguson and Connolly and Brody. So. Pretty solid all around, minus one between Brody and Conley again still, but I think it's okay to deal with. But if we could get a better coach at some point for our defense, that would be good because the chemistry here is very hard to get good when you have Bluages in the lineup and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's our defensive core. And goalie-wise, still Carey Price and Brian Elliott. Carey Price has not grown at all, which is really weird. I don't know if it's because I made him a low franchise, but he's still an 84 at 24, so that's kind of weird. Maybe he'll get some statistical growth or something now and again. And yeah, there's basically our depth guys in Bobrovsky, Savello, and Blugis. And then if we go to the AHL, our AHL team is completely stacked. It is like yoked to the fullest extent. Like nobody is below a 73, actually, except for Heward, but nobody below 73 except for one guy, which is nuts. And pretty much like Wolski. Hillen, even Cleary could all play in the NHL almost at this point. So, like, I don't really like keeping Wolski down there. We're going to keep him down there for just a little bit. We might call him up at some point and replace somebody like Likachev because Likachev is in the last year of his deal, so he might get let go of this offseason, I think, just because of Wolski coming up and whatnot. And if we go to our defensive core, it's also really stacked. Edmonds and Guggenaut, and, yeah, some other 70s. Goalie-wise, we still got Robbins, who's really good, and Lapierre. And then in terms of depth, we even got a lot of 70s as well. So our team is pretty stacked. Actually, I should put Lapierre in the lineup. Yeah, I need to put Lapierre in the lineup because he's actually got potential. I did not realize that I need to make sure all those type of guys have potential in the lineup. Yep, right wing. We need to put Lapierre instead of maybe Hanula. Hanula is 22. Mm, I could also take out. Hmm. I could move Wong up to this part. And does any of these guys take face-offs? Not really. Hmm. Because if I could get a Heward out of the lineup, that'd be good. Let's try moving that. Okay, Snyder could take face-offs to an extent, so we'll move him in there. Unless Yelkinen's better, which he's not. And we'll take Heward out of our lineup. And we will throw in Lapierre in the HL. And that is good. Okay, perfect. And then I'll move Lapierre somewhere in the lineup that actually makes sense. Yeah, somewhere like that. That's good to go. So our teams are pretty stacked. And I'm pretty excited to see how we play this year. I think our team could definitely make a good run for the playoffs. But then again, if we run into Tampa Bay, like I was mentioning there's a good chance that we could get uh, eliminated by them. So let's get to simulating. Let's get this preseason done. And then we will take a look at, uh, actually, we'll yeah, simulate to, to like January the 1st. Yeah, probably January the 1st and see how our team does. Hopefully we have a pretty good record by then. And hopefully we don't need to make much trades at the deadline this year. Okay, so 5-2, and two, pretty good record in the preseason Bergeron led with 11 points in 7 games, so yeah, that top line is going to be dominant this year. I believe, actually, wait, there was... Whose contract was over this year? There's somebody on our top line. It was Kovalchuk, right? Yeah, we're going to give Kovalchuk already, like, an 8-year extension, which you guys are going to say is kind of weird. Actually, hmm, should I give him an 8-year? Hmm, actually, I'll go 6 years like he wants. And we'll give him way less than that. Like, we'll give him, like, 8.9 see if he wants to accept that just because Kovalchuk is an instrumental piece and we got to keep him around because he's like the OG uh, OG Thrasher you know so anyways let's get this season started hopefully we can have a good season just like we just had a good preseason hopefully that's a sign of good things to come okay so Kovalchuk has accepted a six-year deal at 8.9 so pretty good deal considering he's been one of our better players Let's go to, uh, what day is that? November the 1st. Man, I completely draw the blank on there, but whatever. 
Uh, Malkin's already been injured with a pole groin. That's not good. That does affect our top line a little bit, but at least we have some decent depth. Nothing our team cannot handle. And we're winning games early, which is good. Malkin is back, which means Scavell is going to be out. He had three assists in three games. So when you get put on the top line, you're going to score some goals because, yeah, that top line is really good. So Malkin back into the top line, and we're good to go again. Game against Minnesota is a loss. Hmm. But Minnesota is a good team, I think, so it makes sense. And Lapierre has been injured in the age. Let's just go replace player. Another loss and another loss. So we kind of fell off near the end of the month, actually. Three losses in our last four games, but we're 6-5 and five still. Interesting. Still third best in our division, which is also good. And holy crap, our top line must be good. Bergeron, 18 points in 11 games, which means Kovalchuk and Malkin probably also are over point per game. Malkin might not be because he was injured a little bit, but still, our top line is getting most of our offense probably. And we're actually a good offensive team, unlike my Detroit Red Wings, who cannot score sometimes, so. Hmm. Let's go another month, see how we do. See if these guys can continue their ridiculous pace they're on. Because if each one of them has over 100 points this year, that would be pretty crazy. But I don't know if that was going to actually happen or not. So we start off with a win and then a loss to start this month. So we've been kind of struggling a little bit lately. But I think we'll probably bounce back eventually. There's a 6-6 six, six tie. So our first tie of the season. Then we come back with an OT win. Another win. Another win. Yeah, there we go. There's the wins I was mentioning. Gugnot was never injured, I don't think. There's another win. It sucks that Guggenauks are not really panned out, though, because we haven't given him a shot at the NHL level yet. Uh, a couple more wins and a couple losses later in this month. And there's an OT loss. So 12-9-2, so our record is still not great, I would say, but at least it's... Yeah, we're still in a wild card spot, but the record's not great, but the point production is next level. We must not be a good defensive team. Because our top six is literally scoring a lot of points. Koval took 32 points in 24 games. Like, he's definitely on pace for, like, over 100 points this year, I think. Jeez. It's good that we gave him that extension. Definitely worth that money. Okay, let's go another month. I think this team still has it in us. If Even if we're having a little bit of a weird record, at least we're scoring a lot of goals and stuff like that. We should probably make the playoffs still, regardless if we're losing some games, so... There's a win over Arizona or Phoenix. Lost to St. Jose. And Jalen Wall has been injured, so that's not a good... Actually, was he... No, he was back, it said, from injury. He was never injured, though. Okay. I thought it said that he was injured. 4-4 tie with Vancouver. And then went over to Yotes again. We lose to Boston. Okay. At least those ties are getting us some points as well. Javon Abney's injured in the age. I'll go replace Blair. Martinez was never injured, but good try. There's a couple more wins. Yeah, our team is definitely doing pretty solid. So we're 17-14-4-1, which has us still actually on the outside of the playoffs. Wow. Our division is that tight. Okay. So we're not in the playoffs right now, but I don't know what the case is. We probably have to make some adjustments to our roster, but uh, that's kind of weird. Being on the outside of the playoffs, like we could just continue still simulating next in next episode and just make the playoffs with this team I think but uh, yeah our division's really tight when there's only 6 points separating 6th place and 1st place yeah we could definitely still take our uh, our division as long as we have a good second half and we stop losing to divisional opponents but 48 points in 36 games for Bergeron yeah this top line is filthy filthy we'll take a look at our player stats now I guess and See also how our team has been simulating. Take a look at the trading block and that type of thing. Draft class as well for fun. But let's see how each individual line has been doing just because I feel like maybe our top six has been scoring but our bottom six hasn't or maybe it's just our top line that's been scoring. So Malkin so far has been good. 37 points in 33 games. So not on the same level as Bergeron it seems like in Kovalchuk but uh, still really good. Definitely going to have maybe a career year. Or maybe a season where he puts up like 83 to 87 points. Uh, Bergeron, as we saw, was killing it 48 points in 36 games. I think he's definitely going to hit like this year maybe like 100 and something points. 
but he's been really good for us. I'm glad he's simulating actually pretty good though. Three years at 6.7 and then we're going to have to give him a big contract. Yeah, 6.7 is actually a really good contract for him. Uh, Ilya Kovalchuk though, as we were saying as well, 44 points in 36 games. So he kind of slowed down a little bit, but him and Bergeron have been very good for us this season. Incredible stats. Hmm. Then we go to our second line. Kemp has been pretty good. Two goals, 22 assists. So he's not a goal scorer by any means, but he pucks up a lot of assists. And that's pretty good. He's a minus one, but 24 points in 36 games is pretty respectable. He's on pace for like maybe 50 points this year, just like he did last year. And then Kuznetsov has been not good. That is really weird. Actually, well, he's been good, I would say, but not that good. 15 points in 36 games. He's probably on pace for like a 40-point season, which is way less than last year. Like last year must have been just a fluke year where he had 29 goals. Hmm. We could always swap him and Houghton around if Houghton's overperforming him. I don't know. Because Camelier's got 25 points as well. Which means basically everybody but Kuznetsov has been putting up a decent amount of points in the top six, I would say. Kemp has been kind of quite offensively in terms of goals, but not assist-wise. And in third line, Vesa Henricius has got 11 points. He's a minus 10, so our third line is a little bit bad defensively, I guess. We could always change that up. Houghton has got 19 points and he's a minus 8. So yeah, we found one of our lines that are badly minused. So we could always just make some lineup adjustments or we could trade away somebody to maybe make this line a little bit different. And then Bork has 16 points and is a minus 6. Hmm. 19 points. Yeah, we might change Kuznetsov and Houghton around. I think I'll do that for now. I don't know how that's going to simulate, but we'll see. And our fourth line of all our Russians, our Russian three, we'll call them Russian trio. Seven goals, one assist for Ivanov in his first season so far. So definitely a pure goal scorer, at least at this rate. That's good to see. Maybe we'll put him on the power play or something. Frolov has got one goal and 12 assists, so he's like a pure playmaker against Ivanov. And Likachev has been pretty quiet. Six points in 36 games, but he's not getting a lot of ice time. So, guys like Likachev and Kuznetsov need to start performing because I think those type of guys could be, like, guys that we trade away or move away. Kuznetsov is signed for five years, but he's not a terrible player. It's just he needs to start picking up his offense a bit. Maybe he's more of a third liner than a second liner. I don't know. And in our defensive pairings, Kondratiev has got eight points in 36 games, so his point production is not as good as it was in the first year, I think. But he's still putting up some solid numbers, I guess. Jalen Wall, 6 points and a minus 1, so not too bad defensively. Second pairing-wise, Gordon Ferguson. Props to you for being a plus 14 and having 13 points in 36 games. Also having almost as much goals as assists, which is kind of weird for a defenseman. So I'll take that. Emmanuel Martinez is taking a lot of penalty minutes, and that's probably why he's a plus 9. 59 penalty minutes through 36 games, but... He is usually a pretty physical player. He's already got 527 penalty minutes in 363 games. And then we go to our top six pairing. DeAndre Brody, 7 points in 36 games, a minus 9. Hmm. Yeah, he always seems to struggle defensively, so we might have to change that around a little bit. We could always change him and Martinez around if we want to, but then that makes that pairing a minus 3. And then Reed Connolly... Who has already played four? This is already his fourth season, and he's only 21, which is ridiculous. But he's a minus seven, three assists in 36 games, so he's not been that good offensively, and he's been not terrible defensively, but not great either. So our defense could probably use some work a little bit. I don't know. Like we could always upgrade from Kondratiev or something if we want to. And then goalie wise, Carey Price has been pretty solid actually. A 902 save percentage and a 289 goals against. And then Brian Elliott has actually been pretty solid as well. So our goaltending has been good. Yeah, our goaltending is the main reason we're probably playing pretty good. And then our defense hasn't been terrible. And then offensively, like, that top line has been carrying most of our offense. Hmm. And then depth-wise, Blue just hasn't played yet. Bobrovsky hasn't either. And yeah, Scavella was like point per game when he played. 
Hmm. Interesting. So some pretty good stats. Let me get a quick look at the AHL. Yeah, Wolski should not be in the AHL. 30 points in 33 games. So we could always call him up if we need to make some line adjustments. Let me know if you guys think we should do something like that. There's also Easton Hill, who shouldn't probably be down there. Aiden Cleary could also be probably in the NHL at this rate. And then, like, even Wong's listed as a fourth liner down there. So we could make some line adjustments if we want to. And, yeah, Jackson Robbins is way too good for the AHL. He has been fantastic down there, and he needs to probably play as an NHL goalie sometime. Like, Carey Price, uh, honestly, might be one of those goalies that... Like, we could run Brian Elliott and Robbins easily if we want to, but if I trade away Carey Price, I feel like a lot of people will have my head. Um, so that's basically the player stats. Let me take a quick look on how this team has been simulating in terms of our power play and whatnot, because I don't know if our special teams have been good. As I know they have struggled in the past before. So if we go down here at the moment, we're the 15th best team in the NHL. Goals four per game. We are one of the best offensive teams in the NHL. I'd say like just outside of the top 10. Goals against per game wise though, we are, eh, we're not actually that great. Yeah, we're in near the lower half. So we need to probably play a little bit better defensively in terms of maybe our bottom six, especially like that third line. Power play percentage wise, our power play needs to pick it up as well, so we should probably get that going. Maybe put Ivanov on the power play, because he does score a lot of goals. Put him next to somebody that's a good playmaker. And Bingo Bongo, he'll probably score some goals. I don't know. And then our penalty kill, though, has been pretty good. Our penalty kill is top 10 in the NHL at 83%, so we're a good defensive team for the most part, but it does still need some work 5-on-5 five five wise, I guess. We have no short-handed goals, but we've been a good penalty killing team. Hmm. Let's take a look at what is out there on the trading block, and we'll take a look at the draft class, and then that will be pretty much it for this episode. Yes, this episode is probably running a little bit long, but if we want to make a trade and upgrade our defensive for a little bit with like a little bit of veterans, because we do have a lot of young guys in our lineup. Um, there's always like guys like Paul Mira, Pavel Kabina, Thomas Caberlet, so some pretty good defenders. There's also some good forwards like Scott Gomez who could maybe help out our third line and get rid of Kuznetsov. He does actually fit our second line. It's only signed for one year. That's not a bad option. He's actually putting up some decent numbers in Boston too, so I don't know. Maybe Scott Gomez would be intriguing. There's also Steven Weiss and Yaroslav Spotcheck, Zuzan and Pantolfo. But I think our team really doesn't need to make trades because of the amount of depth we have. But if we really want to, we could. Pecorine is on the block. Newly retired Pecorine, I should say. Kind of interesting that he retired. I mean, I kind of was coming anyways. But uh, Klesla, Rakunik, Fahey, O'Neal, Caller. Damn, Colorado wants to get a lot of players. Yeah, there's actually a lot of decently good players on the block. Because a lot of the times when I check is just picks or prospects, but so far there's a player at least on every team, I think, for the most part. We don't really need to trade for prospects because we got so much of them, but we could always do that. Goalie-wise, Volpati, not that we really need another goalie. This guy's has an 885. Hmm. The good thing about having, like, Robins in the AHL is if we ever suffer an NHL injury to somebody like Carey Price... We could always call him up. And we let go of Mateo Clinch and he went back to Montreal, which is kind of funny. Actually, no, that's a different clinch. Never mind. Saw he was a 62. I'm like, what the heck? Because we had a Mateo Clinch, but uh, now there's Marco Clinch. I don't know if they're real players or not. Probably not. Hmm. New Jersey has nothing because New Jersey's probably trying to contend. Wait, was it Dean McCammon? No, that's a different player. Uh, Alex Kovalev still with the Rangers. Huh. Eric does say as well. Is that Martin Broder? Yeah, Martin Broder went to the Sens. What the heck? And he's on the block. That would be interesting just to bring in Broder, but we have nowhere to put him. Because, <laughs> like I said, Ivanov can literally play in the NHL, so it's pointless bringing in somebody like Broder, but it'd just be funny for the memes to have Broder as, like, our backup goalie. Like, imagine if Martin Broder ever played in Atlanta. Pavel Burr is also on the block. Does still have a really good shooting, but he is injured at the moment. And he is still putting up really good numbers at his overall. Hmm. Sucks that he's injured, because if he wasn't injured, I would say, hey, 
he could be a good depth scoring option or somebody to help out our power play lines. But uh, yeah, Toronto, Lehman, Horkov, Antropov. How did Antropov get to an 87? Okay, Kozlov and Friesen, David Tanabi's in the block. <laughs> Ole Jokin is in Vancouver. Uh, makes me think of X Tech because he always mentions about Ole Jokin and then Vancouver being his team. It's funny. Uh, Chris Clark in Washington as well. Interesting that Chris Clark and Tom Pody are both in Washington. And yeah, that's basically what is on the trading block. Let's quickly gloss over the draft class. Not that it really matters. But in case you guys wanted to see who's the top prospects. What was that guy's name? Lasty Pusin. I always look for like funny names after I record just because it's kind of fun doing that. But if you guys see anybody interesting for the draft, let me know. Just I know it's kind of early to say that, but still. Might as well bring this up. See if there's any low elites to pin yet, which I don't think there will be. Oh, there might be a low elite two-way defenseman. Okay, this guy looks intriguing. We'll pin you for now. And Jesus Martin, shout out to you, or Jesus Martin. <laughs> so anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Atlanta Thrashers franchise mode. So in next episode, we might make trades. I don't think we necessarily need to, but we might make trades and uh yeah we'll simulate the rest of the season and try and get back into a playoff spot because right now our top line has just been carrying our team for the most part i would say so let me know what you guys think down below and i'll see you guys next time